It's good that you join me today with Unit 3, Early to Bed and Early to Rise. And we are going to talk about focus on speaking. Yes, that is our focus today. So I'd like you to open your textbook for listening and speaking and go to page 64. Focus on speaking. First thing we're going to do is we're going to review the vocabulary uh, that we've talked about throughout this whole unit so far yeah and we're going to use the vocab in different situations now the first one you're going to read the website about sleep disorders and you circle the correct word okay here you have the choice between either critical or sleep deprived or have a tendency to or make it a priority you're going to circle the word or phrase that fits best in that paragraph or sentence Pause your video to do that. Go ahead. Awesome. That brings us to expansion of the vocabulary. Yeah, you're looking at the expressions and the definitions of the expressions. Burn the midnight oil, irritable, naps, not off, power nap, run by, shut eye, be drowsy, demonstrate in a major concern. Now you're going to read the conversations below between one, an employee and his boss, and two, two friends. Now you complete the conversations with words from the box. Then practice the conversation. So we're going to use, let's look here, and so these are the words and the meanings, yeah, the definitions. Conversation one, sleep pods. We've got drowsy, irritable, naps, power nap, and run by. I want you to complete this conversation. Okay, complete the conversation and try to speak it out loud, practice it. That goes to conversation two, research on sleep and memory. We've got uh, burning the midnight oil, demonstrate a major concern, nod up and shut eye. Yeah, please also fill this one out and practice speaking this out loud. You can pause your video, go ahead. Awesome, that brings us to the point of creating. So we just did the review and then the expansion of using the vocabulary in the context of a conversation. And now we are creating something with it. So basically here we have student A and student B um, with the questions and with answers. Ask and answer each other questions in a few sentences. Use as many of the vocabulary items in your column as you can. So for instance, you're a student A, these are the questions that you ask and these are for student B and then vice versa, these are the things that you can use in order to answer. Now since we're not in a classroom right now, I don't know if we have time in our Zoom to do that. Other than that, you could do it by yourself to try to be student A and B at the same time or you could practice this with your friend through a video call or just an audio call. Right? But please take time to practice this using the words in the box. Yeah, go ahead. Awesome, that brings us to the grammar for today. Here we have a conversation. I'd like you to read it out loud and then answer the questions. Number one, what two suggestions does the doctor make? Number two, what verb tense does the doctor use to make the suggestions? Please answer these questions. Go ahead. That brings us to the grammar for today, which is the present on the real conditional. Now, uh, for you guys, grade 11, if I'm not mistaken, last year you got this as a, as a material already, but I will still uh, place it in your ebook again as a summary and review. If we're talking about the present on real condition is we're talking about the conditional sentences, and we basically got four. You might know them from um, DINAS as uh, type 0, type 1, type 2, type 3. In the ESL program, they refer to it like real and unreal. So if we have type 0, which is the present real conditional, the present real conditional, that would be talking about the general truth. 
You only need, you only use the present tense. Does the present real? Um, <clears throat> in the if clause, you would use the present tense, the simple present, and in the main clause, you would use the simple present. If we're talking about type one, which is a future real, still real, future real, we're talking about a possible condition uh, with, a, pro uh, with a, possible, uh, a probable result. In the if clause, we use the simple present tense still, and in the main clause, we use the simple future. Yeah, so remember the type zero, which is present real, um, if clause, simple present, main clause, simple present. And for type one, which is future real, if clause, simple present, result clause, simple future. But then we also have another one. If we have real, we also have unreal, right? Now, for the unreal, we have two types. Um, the first one, which is referred to as type two, that one is the present unreal. That's the one we're going to talk about today. Present unreal conditional. The present unreal conditional talks about an unreal, talks about a hypothetical situation, a hypothetical condition and the probable results. So that is a condition that kind of could have worked or could work, you know, hypothetically speaking. If I will say to you, um, for instance, if, if I am the president, if I were the president, sorry, if I were the president, I would buy you a house. If I were the president, I would buy you a house. That would be the present unreal condition in the sense that it is hypothetically speaking possible that I could become a president, let's say, but probably not. And then in that case, if that were to happen, I would give you a house. So type two is hypothetical condition, which actually kind of could happen, but it's kind of probably not. Yeah. So in the if clause, we use um, the simple past. If I were the president and in the result clause or in the main clause, we would use the present conditional. Yeah, the present conditional. So that would be words like <clears throat> would, could, might. We use would, could, might. And then we've got type three, which is the past unreal. So we've got the present unreal. We've got the past unreal. That is type three. It's the past unreal conditional. And the past unreal conditional is an unreal past condition and it's probable result, but it can never happen. That is something that has happened already and cannot be restored. There's no chance to do that anymore. For example, if I would say we use in the in the if clause, we use the past perfect tense. And in the result clause or the main clause, we use the perfect condition. So for instance, if I say with the past perfect, we would be using had plus past participle, yeah? Verb three. So if I, for example, say if I had studied for the exam, that is the past perfect. If I had studied, which is verb three, for the exam. And then in the result clause, we use would have, could have, might have. I would have graduated high school. Yeah, if I had studied for the exam, I would have passed and graduated high school. So in the past, unreal, we're referring to something that actually could have been different if I only had done something about it, but the chance has passed, so it cannot be reversed anymore. It's a done deal, yeah? So remember, we've got real and unreal. Real, we have present and future, yeah? And the present is a general truth, so if clause, simple present, result clause, simple present, for the future real, if clause, simple present, result clause, simple future. And then we've got the two unreal ones. Present unreal then would be for the result clause, we use um, the simple past. And in the result clause, we would use would, could, or might. And then we have the past unreal conditional, which in the if clause uses the past perfect tense, which is had plus verb three. 
And in the result clause, you either use would have, could have, or might have. Yeah? So present real is a general truth. Future real is a probability of what can happen in the future and is still will happen. That's very possible to happen. For the present unreal, we're looking at a hypothetical situation that could actually happen, but the chances are small, but that could also happen. And past unreal is something that has happened and cannot be reversed. Now, I hope that this is uh, clear for you. I will place this as a grid in your ebook again, just so you would um, remember and can look back at it, okay? As a whole, I mean like complete, because this is only one part. What we're gonna talk about right now is only the present unreal conditional, okay? A present unreal conditional sentence has two clauses, the if clause, which states the condition, and the result clause, which is also sometimes called the main clause, which states the results. Use the present unreal conditional to talk about something that is untrue, impossible, or imagined. So it's hypothetical, hypothetical. To form the present unreal conditional, use the past form of the verb. Yeah, so the simple, the, the past, the simple past. Yeah, um, in the if clause. Yeah, as I said just now, the simple past. And note that the sentence is not in the past tense, however. Yeah, it's not in the past tense, but you use a simple past form of uh, the verb, yeah? If I didn't work at night, I could go to bed early. So the result clause uses could, would, or might, yeah? I work at night, so I can't go to bed early, okay? Use would plus the base form of the verb in the main clause, that is the result clause, to describe a definite result. So if, Lian, if Leanne didn't have such a hectic lifestyle, she would spend, yeah? So we use would, could, or might. Use might or could to describe a possible uh, result. Mostly we use would for a more definite result and might or could for a possible result. So using would would be more definite. To make a question, Use question order in the main clause. If you were sleep deprived, would you be able to tell? Yeah? Or how would you be able to tell? The if clause is not needed if the condition is understood by the listener. So in this case, this would be enough. Yeah? For the verb be, use were for all subjects. So I were, she were, he were, we were, they were, you were, yeah? You cannot use was, am, or is, only were. You can begin the sentence with either the if clause or the main clause. For example, if I went to bed earlier, comma, I would feel better. Or I would feel better if I went to bed earlier. Remember, if you start a sentence with an if clause, then if clause is a dependent clause, okay? It cannot stand on its own. So if you start a sentence with it, you have to use a comma in the middle. But if you start with the result clause or the main clause, there is no comma. Okay, this is important to remember. Yeah? So we use the simple past in the if clause. Yeah? For the... Um, to form the present real, we use the past form. So the simple past of the verb in the if clause. And we use would, could, or might in the result clause. Okay? So make sure that you understand this to be more definite use would to be less definite more a possibility use might and could if you start the sentence with the if clause use a comma if you start the sentence with the result clause and the if clause comes later on then you do not use a comma cool beans now you read the interviews and complete the sentences i want you to use the present unreal conditional and uh, then after that please read the conversations out loud yeah, with expression. Yay. Interview be between a sleep researcher and a medical worker. Here you see you have to use the words work and not get. In this case, they can get really overtired if they worked less. Remember that the verb should be in the simple past. Worked less day. And what is it we would put in there? So you use not get. And that should be with would, could, or might. Remember that? Would, could, or might. Okay, uh, let me get an idea of that. 
Woodcut of my wood would not get. If they worked last day, would not get. Or you could say wouldn't get. Why would? Because it's more definite. Okay? So remember, use would if it's definite. We'll use could or might if it's a possibility. I want you to answer that until number 20. It's very long, see? Whew, all the way until here. Take some time to do this. It's important for your writing and also for your speaking. Pause your video, go ahead. Awesome. That brings us to um, <clears throat> number three. Here, one person works for the Satellite Sisters radio talk show and the other is calling to get advice about the sleep problem. Actually, you're supposed to take turns describing their problems and making suggestions using the present unreal conditional that whereas here in this part, you're actually supposed to practice it in speaking. What you did just now was more like in writing, completing, recognizing and completing it. And now you should practice that. So since uh, you are home by yourself, can you please try this out by yourself or with someone at home or maybe with a friend through audio call or video call? Yeah, we will go over this in our next Zoom meeting. So basically, take turns, describe the problem and make suggestions. For example, here, my schedule changes from day to day. Sometimes I go to bed early, sometimes late, depending on how much homework I have to do. When I finally do go to bed, I can sleep. And then maybe the other person can answer, why don't you take a bath before going to bed? If you took a warm bath, you would find it easier to go to sleep. Now, see, so you see what this person does here? If you took a warm bath, past tense, and then in the result, that is the if clause, and then the result clause, you would, would find it easier, or could, or might, okay? The point is to try it out, okay? Here's number one, two, three, and then we've got four, five, and six. Please practice this. Pause your video. Great. Pronunciation. Contrastive stress. Native speakers contrast information in a sentence by emphasizing the words they want to contrast or the accented syllables in those words. Now, the emphasized words or syllables are said louder, more slowly, or with a higher pitch. See, and that's how we create and we emphasize meaning. Listen. In the following example, the speaker is contrasting body with brain and classroom with pillow. My body's in the classroom, but my brain's still on the pillow. Ah, that gives us a clear example of how he pronounces ah, the ah of body, the my body's in the classroom, but my brain's still on the pillow. So you see this emphasis, emphasize and contrast, but also emphasize meaning and maybe meaning of contrast. Okay, I want you to listen to the sentences and as you listen, please underline the contrasted words and try to repeat them by yourself, trying to say them out loud because this is how you will practice your pronunciation, okay? Listen first and try to underline, circle, or highlight the words that you hear that are contrasted. One, I need to go to bed, but I'm feeling energetic. Two, adolescents wake up late but children wake up early. Three. Leon is fast asleep, but her children are awake. Four. My husband has insomnia, but I need to sleep. Five. I'm sleepy in the morning, but I'm wide awake at night. Okay, I'm gonna let you listen to it one more time. One, I need to go to bed, but I'm feeling energetic. Two, adolescents wake up late, but children wake up early. Three, Leon is fast asleep, but her children are awake. Four, 
My husband has insomnia, but I need to sleep. Five. I'm sleepy in the morning, but I'm wide awake at night. Okay, very good. Please check your answers. Okay, here in number two, we look at the contrasting information in columns A and B. You create and say sentences that emphasize the information. For example, what are some obvious effects of sleep deprivation? Yeah, absenteeism. What are some subtle effects of sleep deprivation? Emotional problems. Now, for example, you could change that and saying absenteeism is an obvious effect of sleep deprivation, but emotional problems are more subtle effects. See what I mean? So the emphasis kind of lie on these words to create a more a stronger meaning of contrast. Here we have uh, four more and I'd like you to try it out. For example, when is melatonin secreted in adults? When is mel melatonin secret, secret, secreted in adolescents? So maybe you can make this contrast, you know? For example, melatonin is, and then you emphasize on melatonin, is secreted in adults early evening. Yeah? And then you can make that contrast with but, but melatonin, uh, but melatonin in adolescence is secreted late at night like that so you're gonna connecting sentence one column a to sentence one column b and then you use but and then you try to emphasize on those keywords okay try this out by yourself go ahead awesome that brings us to number three we're going to complete the survey and compare the answers now then report any differences that you see. You're gonna use the contrastive stress to indicate your comparison. So remember, it's the stress you put on words in your pronunciation to show comparison. Often wake up at night, but I often wake up at night, but Joe never does. Or I take naps in the morning, but Celia takes naps in the afternoon. See how that is emphasized. Okay, it shows this comparison. So basically try it out here by yourself. Take some time to try out answer number one to seven by using, by using this emphasis, this contrastive stress emphasis on the words. Please pause your video to practice this. Go ahead. Great. Yeah, I know that these are things you got to do by yourself and it, that's not as much fun as in a classroom. Totally agree with you. But I still want you to know and understand this. So during Zoom meetings, some of you can just uh, answer those. But I still would really want you to practice it by yourself. Speaking skill. Interrupting to ask for clarification is totally fine to make sure that you understand something so your conversation <clears throat> can keep going. Sometimes you might not hear a speaker's information clearly if it is spoken too fast or there's background noise or you have a difficulty understanding the speaker. Now to clarify information, especially facts, you can one, interrupt the speaker and ask about what you thought you heard or two, ask the speaker to repeat what he or she said. Now here's an example. Joelle, I heard some horrifying statistic over 30% of traffic accidents are caused by sleepiness. People should be more careful. What did you say? 13%? Now this is asking for clarification. No, I said over 30%. That's a lot, don't you think? 30%? I see what you mean. Wow, that's a very high figure. Now, here are some expressions you can use to interrupt the speaker when you do not understand something. Use rising intonation for the questions. So remember, we can interrupt to ask about what you thought you heard, like here. What did you say? 13%? That's what, you, what she thought she heard. Or 
ask the speaker to repeat what he or she said. Could you repeat that? Sorry, I didn't hear you. What was that? Like this. That's the request for clarification. Excuse me, what did you say? These are all polite. Okay. Now, definitely, I want you to practice. Um, basically, student A would read each statement aloud, right? And speak too softly or too quickly or mispronounce an important word so that student B won't understand and will have to ask a question, right? That's the whole point. And then student B would listen, interrupt to ask a question, to ask partner A to repeat information, right? For example, I read 70% of Americans are insomniac insomniacs. Sorry, could you repeat that, please? Like, what did you say? Yeah, I like that. So student A should have to say it in a way so student B doesn't really hear it and has to ask for input and for clarification interrupting. Okay, please try this out. Um, try the asking for clarification by yourself, okay? I just try to play student B and try to come up with how do I interrupt to ask for clarification either by asking what you thought you heard or by just uh, asking the speaker to repeat. Okay, pause your video and try this out. Go ahead. Okay, guys, well done. That brings us to the end of this lesson. Yeah. As a review, we started off with our vac vocabulary. We reviewed that in the context <coughs> of a text, sleep disorders, are you a victim? You had to choose the correct phrase or um, word. In context, when we went over the expansion of vocabulary, using a vocabulary in a conversation, seeing what word would fit in the best within a conversation. And then we came to the point of creating. You had to create a talk or a question and answering using the vocabulary in the boxes that brought us to our grammar in our grammar we looked at the present unreal conditionals we reviewed the four conditionals type zero which is the present real type one which is the future real type three type two that is the present unreal and type three which is the past unreal and our focus was on the present on real conditional type two you had to um, finish the interviews by using the correct present on real conditional and um, do a, some kind of talk using it in your speaking as well using the present on real so in writing and in speaking and last we did the pronunciation of contrastive stress which means that you emphasize on particular words in order to show a comparison or contrast. Our speaking skill was interrupting to ask for clarification either by asking about what you thought you heard, repeating that, or asking the speaker to repeat what he or she said. Exactly, that brings us to the end of this video. Thank you very much for your hard work, your effort. I appreciate you, you are amazing and God bless you. Bye.